watching a Halloween baby, it's almost a prerequisite that I be obsessed with the horror genre. And though I do meet that requirement, sometimes, being just a girl myself, I need a break from all the terror and gore. Today is no such break. <laughs> everyone and welcome back to the Neverland Book Club and happy Halloween of course! Today I'd like to discuss a few authors of the horror and thriller genre that are a bit more contemporary. Because of course we have our Alice Rices, our Margaret Atwoods, our James Pattersons, our Dean Koontz, and I can't leave out the king himself. Stephen King. We all know those names well enough by now. I want to discuss authors I've mentioned here before or have recently had the privilege of reading, along with a few recommendations for each. Let's start with none other than Alice Feeney. If you've been watching me from the very beginning, you know how much I adore anything written by Feeney. And although she is more likely to be found under the suspense or psychological thriller genre rather than horror, there's no doubt I have gotten a nightmare or two while reading her novels. Known for crafting suspenseful narratives filled with the most unexpected twists and dark emotional depth, Feeney's books often leave you with an irresolute feeling. She weaves themes of secrets, betrayal, and complex characters into the twists of her stories, hooking her readers with intricate plots and, my favorite, the unreliable narrator. I just love feeling like I'm losing my mind right alongside the main character. It makes me feel included. Feeney's strength lies in her ability to build tension while making her characters explore the depths of their darkness, making readers question their perception of the characters until at the very last page, and sometimes beyond. I actually have a full video dedicated to her debut novel, Sometimes I Lie. I think I posted that back in 2021, if you're interested in watching an oldie. Other notable works I've read and recommend include His and Hers, Rock, Paper, Scissors, and her most recent, Good, Bad Girl. All with complex characters and multi-layered plots. No, it's Good, Bad Girl. It's not good. Bad good girl? No. Next we'll discuss a little genre I like to call whimsy horror, with an author I've only recently found and have been reading non-stop. T. Kingfisher, a pseudonym for the genius behind the name Ursula Vernon. Vernon initially gained recognition as a children's author and illustrator, but branched out into adult fiction under this pseudonym. She's categorized under genres such as fantasy, horror, and even some fairy tale retellings, if I'm not mistaken. With a unique blend of humor, heart, romance, and dark magical elements, I'd describe T. Kingfisher as a master of whimsy. Her stories revolve around characters not normally seen in the spotlight. We have enough novels surrounding illiterate 19-year-old conventionally thin and beautiful outspoken women. Kingfisher gives us a cast of characters in each one of her books that just about anyone can relate to, not to mention the character development alongside each description. We find her main characters and even side characters end the story doing things they wouldn't have had the strength to accomplish on the first page. And I love to see that. The few titles I've read so far and highly recommend include A Sorceress Comes to Call, which I included in my summer wrap of honorable mentions, A House with Good Bones, that was a fun one, and Paladin's Grace, which is more of a romance with magical elements, given the title. I remember reading the the very first page of A Sorceress Comes to Call and knowing immediately, oh, I'm gonna enjoy this. It's deeply unsettling in the most satisfying way, and that satisfaction just about follows you through to the end of her stories. Her latest release, Thornhedge, is already in my TBR and I'll be reading it very soon. Next, Isabel Cañas. I read two novels by this author and believe me, that is enough to fully recommend her. She's filed under gothic horror, and though that's absolutely correct, I'd also categorize her novels under romance horror because not only are her stories classically scary, they're also laced with a warm romance that makes you feel brave enough to push through the terror. Her strength lies in crafting hauntingly vivid landscapes that feel alive themselves, using them to evoke both dread and beauty. Cañas also uses cultural history, particularly her Mexican heritage, with the eerie, creating stories that are powerfully immersive and filled with tension. Her complex characters have strong conflicts both inner and outer, dealing with the monsters before them as well as their own self-growth and realization. I read both of Kanye's novels, her debut, The Hacienda, as well as her more recent Vampires of El Norte, which mixes vampire lore and historical fiction against the backdrop of the Mexican-American War. I recommend both as well as any future novels she may release. Next we dive into the more thriller or psychological horror genre with Riley Sager. I've personally read five of his novels and I've enjoyed every single one. Sager's strengths lie in his use of tension, mind-bending plot twists, and once again, a trend with these genres, the unreliable narrator. This cocktail creates an almost claustrophobic atmosphere where characters are isolated and confronted by both physical and psychological threats. His novels also explore themes of survival, trauma, and the impact of past events on the present. How decisions made one day can seem for the best just to quickly realize you've constructed your own demise. Not only will I be reading all of his novels, both old and new, I recommend them all to you. And that rhymed. 
so you know it's true. We have Middle of the Night, The House Across the Lake, Lock Every Door, Final Girls, and The Only One Left, just to name a few. All right, now a few different authors are pretty tied up for the fifth spot on this little list. I'll be mentioning them all, but there's one in particular that stands out amongst the rest, and that's Alex Michaelitz. Michael Lides. Michael Lids. This one. I've read two out of his three release novels and have the third on my TBR shelf. It's right here. My favorite of which being The Silent Patient. Now, I understand why this title went a little viral a few years back. It's slow burn tension and crazy plot twist that was just shy of predictable made for an immersive, unnerving atmosphere which mirrors his character's internal struggles. Holding a degree in psychotherapy, he uses elements of dramatic irony well, playing with the trust of his readers, making them second guess what they think they know about the story as it progresses. I have yet to read his third book, Fury, but have every intention to enjoy it just as much as I had the others. Okay, next we have two authors I'll put on the same tier since they give off the same vibes in their novels, and just to be honest, I sometimes get them confused with one another. Lisa Jewell and Lucy Foley. I actually, I put Lisa Jewell here. I have Lucy Foley. I have like two of her books over there, and I just forgot to bring them up here. Known for their work in psychological thr thr <laughs> known for their work in psychological thrillers and suspense fiction, both authors create tense, character-driven stories with notable hooks, well-timed twists, and dark and intricate plot lines. Jewel gravitates more towards domestic suspense, exploring family dynamics and hidden secrets, while Foley specializes in locked room mysteries and atmospheric thrillers with a cast of suspicious characters. I recommend any of their novels if you're looking for a quick suspense fix. Then She Was Gone by Jewel and The Guest List by Foley. Those were my two favorites of the two. I believe I've mentioned both in past videos. Okay, the final name on my list is someone that is not known for horror or suspense or thriller, or anything of this nature, but they give me the creeps when I read their novels anyway. Haruki Murakami. I've had nightmares. I've gotten the spooks. And it's all been in good Murakami fun. He has a way of being both charming and creepy at the same time. And though you wouldn't expect to slowly erupt in goose flesh while reading one of Murakami's novels, I find myself rubbing my arms quite frequently. Some notable novels that I remember giving me the real creeps include 1Q84, A Wild Sheep Chase, the Wind-Up Bird Chronicles, and the one that gave me the most spooks for some reason, Killing Commendator. Commendator. Com it gives me trouble every time. But as you know, I recommend all of Murakami's novels. He's a favorite here. We, we know that. All right, those are all the authors and titles I'll speak on today, though there are so many others in the classic section I could have brought up. And yes, I realize the majority of what was discussed is mostly under the thriller or suspense genres. I know horror is a different ball grain. Broad oh my god. And this was enlightening to me as well, finding out I don't read nearly as much horror as I thought I did. Being my favorite genre and all, you'd think there'd be more. All those romance novels on my shelf say otherwise, but that's neither here nor there. Okay, we're not talking about that. Something I intend to work on in 2025 is getting more horror on these shelves. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like this video if you liked it and subscribe for more. Today's shout out goes to John Smith with your one word comments or just emoji comments I sometimes like to decipher. I wanna know what you mean. Like, what does the dress mean? Did you like my outfit? I don't know. Thank you for this constant engagement as well as your occasional compliments. I appreciate you. All right, I'm off to go max out my Libby loans on Briley Sager and T. Kingfisher to meet my reading goal for the year. Stay lost. Keep reading. Happy Halloween! Oh, goodbye! <laughs>